One paper, another duck doodle by Ken Morrell Jr. Oh, here I am setting up the frame for a duck doodle. The frame is one cell within the whole comic strip. I'm just creating another frame. You notice the frames are not the same size. They're the same height, but not the same width. And we're creating yet one more frame, which is a square at the end. And it's a linear strip. Uh, looks like we're in a mountain, so we have established a setting. And we also have a small duck, so we're establishing scale. Scale is the relative size of objects compared to one another. We've got a duck looking at something. So we've changed camera angles, too. We've now zoomed in on the duck, and we have literally zoomed in. That was kind of dizzying. You missed a spot. Uh, so we're looking up at the mountain, or the duck is anyway. And we've zoomed back out, but not as far out as in frame one. So the duck looks like uh, it's walking. We are now moving along a little bit. So there's action. Not a lot of action, but some. And words. What are these words going to say? Sometimes I just like to look up. Aw, well, it's a reflective duck. And this is this duck is thinking this. This isn't saying it. We know that because of the dots and the word cloud instead of a word bubble. Oh, setting up a new comic strip. And we can tell because the gutter size is different than the gutter size of the first one. So we're a little bit further away in terms of the where the frames are. Oh, got a new duck already. We're establishing a setting. Let's see if you can guess what the setting is. Now, this is the big clue to what the setting is. That's what I wish I was doing more often. Uh, it's a pillow. So we are in a bed. Well, the duck is in a bed. I'm sitting up editing this film. There's the headboard. It's just very simple, right? There's no need to be super fancy with this. Uh, there's the frame of the bed. And a little nightstand. And that's all there is in that one. That frame is done. And we'll create a new frame. See how the gutter size between the frames is thinner than the gutter size between the frames of these different comic strips. All right, creating the bed. Again, we've changed the camera angle. We're now off to the side of our setting. And we have a duck. The duck is doing something. What's the duck doing? Oh, there's the folded over, and there's its foot under the covers, and there's the blanket. All right, so the duck is sitting up. There's its hand pushing the covers up. What's going to happen in this one? Oh, it's happy. The duck woke up happy. I'm never really, I don't know, I'm grateful in the morning. I'm always grateful for a new day. Oh, there's a window. Well, I assume it's a window anyway. Oh, we're showing a little bit of perspective. That wall is coming toward us. And then a bed stand. All right. And a little drawer. There we go. The floor meets the wall. Uh-oh. We have a happy tree. Well, I won't assume the tree's emotional state. The duck is happy looking at the tree. So maybe it's a happy tree. All right. Oh, we have a tall frame. And the way we read this panel is that it's last so far. We have the duck sleeping in the first panel, then we move down. So we're always going from left to right, like you read a book. And then, so when there's a gutter to the right of two frames that are lined up, you read those first. So the top one, then the one with the duck sitting up, and now the one that I'm working on now. So we've changed uh, position again with the camera. The duck is sitting up and we've we've got a close-up of the duck. We didn't change scale because the size of the pillow is still the same compared to the size of the duck. So it's not a, a scale change. It's just a, a change of perspective. We've zoomed in. There we go. Oh, he's saying something or thinking something. I don't know yet. This day has something new to offer us. Oh, that's nice. And he's saying it. We can tell because the tail of the word bubble is curved down toward his head. Or its head. All right, again with a new strip. We've got the first frame, which is wide. Oh, what are we doing? What is this? It's a loaf of bread. 
no, loaf of bread, a Twinkie, a Twinkie with a bite of it, a Twinkie with a bite out of it, and a trailer hitch, and wheels, oh, I know what kind of Twinkie this is, yeah, this is the Silver Space Twinkie, this is my house, this is also where uh, one of the ducks live, and the duck is obvious, obviously represents me, so let's get this, the other window in, there's two windows, three windows on that side. And then that's the back window by the bathroom. And the, the, oh, there we go. There's the step that never, ever comes down, so I had to build my own step for it. All right. Oh, we've got the setting, so we're on the ground. Oh, there we go. There's our friend, the happy tree. Got a gnarly happy tree with the root structure. And let's see. Oh, there's its, there's its leaves. Yeah, nice. It's representative of spring or summer. Kind of wishful thinking, I guess. Ah, oh, our happy tree has friends. That's nice. And more friends. Well, we don't know they're happy trees. Maybe they're angry trees. Hopefully they're happy trees. They surround my house. Got... Oh, I know what this is. This is the coolest car ever made. This is a 2009 Hyundai Accent hatchback. A two-door little beast of a car. Yep, put the little headlights on there. And are we in it? And we're in it. There we go. Oh, uh, where are we going? Nothing's open right now. COVID-19, man, stay home. There's the driveway. Maybe it's just pretending to drive around. Let's see. Create another frame. Tell the rest of the story. So we've read all the way across that panel. Now we go to the bottom left. What's happening? What is this? Oh, we're inside. Oh, putting his arm around his lady. All right. Nope. Doesn't look super happy. I guess that's not happening. There's the front seats, the back seats. Oh, the passenger seat's empty. It's just a lonely little duck driving around. Trying to evade the terror that is what we're facing right now. Getting out, seeing the world, but remaining socially distant. Yep, buckle up. Good job. Buckle up for safety, kids. The radio and the shifter. There's the glove box and the place for the non-existent passenger to put her feet. What's this? What is this? Oh, it's the front of the Silver Space Twinkie. There we go. And the trees. Gotta appease the gods of the trees, because... Again, I'm surrounded by them. All right, we've got another panel, or another frame. It's happening. What is this? Oh, it's the car, yep. There's the Hyundai Accent again. They put those wheel wells in there, all four of them. It's the front windshield, which I guess is the only windshield. The rest are just called windows. Nice. All right, there's our duck driving. It's safe, safely moving along. There's the empty passenger seat. Maybe he's wishing that Miss Rosemary were in there. What's this? Oh, I see what happened. So he backed up and turned around. Didn't need all that information. I have you... Sometimes the viewer can just guess at what's happening. There you go. Oh, yeah, put the little spoiler in there on the front. Let that beast breathe some air. Yep, don't want pizza cutters on there. Add some thickness to the tires. There you go. A little smile and the seat. Now it's safe to drive. Don't, don't forget the trees. Don't forget the trees. Ah, oh, thank you. There we go. Adding details of the setting. We don't need exact details, just need to know that it's trees and that you can remember from before in the first cell that that means trees. It's a little symbol. Oh, got the Airstream and the trailer hitch. The front window. Side window and the door. The step that doesn't come down. Where are we going? Oh, there we go. Oh, we're... We're getting away from the Airstream. Where are we going? I want to go somewhere.
somewhere. I'm tired of being stuck home. Oh, there's the ground. There's the trees. And the trees are reaching out for me? No, no, they're not. That's the mountains. Because I live in the mountains. Nice. There's the, uh, the driveway that turns into a road. And I'm writing something. Hopefully it's deep and engaging and philosophical. I wonder if everyone is as lucky as me. That's not a question. Don't put the question mark there. Well, it's too late. It's in ink now. Can't erase ink. Well, you're stuck with it. That sounds like I wonder if everyone's as lucky as me? Eh? I don't think so. I don't think everybody is as lucky as me. There we go. Oh, and there's the font. Okay. I have to share where this font came from. I did not invent it. And I'm pretty sure that the, the person who I took inspiration for this didn't invent it either. But I want to give credit to him. Bill Watterson, the illustrator and writer for Calvin and Hobbes, my favorite comic strip of all time. That was how he wrote his, um, how he wrote Calvin and Hobbes. And I took it from him because I want to pay homage to, to, I think, the greatest comic strip writer and illustrator of all time. So, as Picasso said, stealing is the greatest form of flattery or something to that effect? I don't know. Alright, adding color. And these, these pens are amazing. They're like watercolor brush tips. And that, that actually dried out a lot smoother than that looks. And my friend Susan gave those to me. Uh, I think she gave them to me when she was cleaning out her studio in Traveler's Rest and was moving to Durham, North Carolina. Um, so thanks, Susan. I love those pens. They work really well for duck doodles. And I don't actually color that fast. This is definitely one in three quarters times sped up. Oh, I'm inking in in red because Bill Watterson used red for Calvin and Hobbes. Therefore, I just steal everything he did. Granted, my ducks are not nearly as mischievous as Calvin and Hobbes. I'm trying to um, do something that's, you know, a good role model for, for kids. Although I do think Calvin was a great role model because his imagination was so rich. Oh, uh, it's the 26th. Oh, yeah, that's right. I created that on the 26th. There I am, signing all of my work. Always sign and date your work. If you don't put your name and your the date on it, you will not remember when you created it, and that, that needs to be a piece of the history of your work. So I want to thank my mom, dad, Kurt, for encouraging me since 1988 and before, Susan for the, the stuff, and Rosemary Gray for being amazing, and uh, all this stuff. So follow me on at KMRL Design.